I see our minister is approaching the rostrum at this point. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to hear from our Western Regional Minister? Are you ready to hear the truth and answer the questions that have been posed to not only the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, but the Nation of Islam? Are you ready? Are you really ready? Let us hear from one of our young lions, one of our brothers who has been raised up by God to be a defender of the faith, Brother Minister Tony Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due. We thank Almighty God, Allah, the Creator of all things, the Revealer of all truth, and to the Sender of all the great prophets. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for giving to us Moses and the Torah, or Old Testament. We thank him for giving to us Jesus and the Injil, or New Testament. We thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. I would be remiss in my duty, however, if I did not thank Almighty God Allah enough. We have to thank him for fulfillment of Bible prophecy. As it is written in the Bible, God told Abraham that his seed was going to get lost. And he told Abraham that they will be taken into a strange land amongst some strange people. These people in turn will afflict them for 400 years. God said after that time, I, even I, will go after them. We believe that that Bible prophecy is talking of the black man and woman and particularly in America. We believe that we are the fulfillment of many of the Bible prophecies. We thank Almighty God Allah for coming to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. We believe that Master Farad Muhammad is Mahdi of the Muslim world and Messiah of the Christian world. That's what we know and believe. We believe that he came among us as it is written and from among us he would raise one like unto Moses. That man who we believe he raised for us here in the hills of North America first, giving to him a message to the black man. We believe that that man is the honorable Elijah Muhammad and that he too fulfills Bible prophecy where Malachi closes saying, behold, I send you Elijah. We thank Master Farad Muhammad for his coming and we thank them for backing that one in our midst today. One who the world over is becoming very familiar with. That black man that is written of after he would resurrect Lazarus, a black man in America like unto Lazarus, always begging for the crumbs off of the White House table always standing at the gate of white philanthropists begging them to give to us what we should unite and give to ourselves. We talking about that Lazarus who the women was crying over and they went to Jesus and said, him that you love is dead and Jesus said, show me where they have laid him. And when Jesus saw where Lazarus was laying, he had been there approximately four days. 
That four days represents the 400 years of us being in one of the most wicked countries anywhere to be found on this planet, and that country is America. And you may think it ain't wicked. She's a real slickster. But everywhere this Jesus went, the Jews would follow him, particularly when he was going after Lazarus, who everybody considered dead. After 400 years of slavery, the Caucasians thought that they had spiritually and mentally killed us. Because we look dead. Dead mean doing nothing. Huh? Dead mean having nothing. Right? That mean making no progress. If you ask the black man standing on the corner, what's happening? He will say to you, nothing. Is that right? Well, this particular servant of God today, everyone say no one can unite the black man. He's hopeless. He's a criminal. He can't be redeemed. He can't be reformed. The black women had begun to give up on us, but lo and behold, God inspired Farrakhan. Is that right? Where he went out speaking to all men and everybody was laughing when he said he, like Jesus, would ask God to work through him and he will call the black Lazarus of America into Washington. You can't do that. He's dead. So Farrakhan says, show me where you have laid him. He's in the inner cities of America, tied to the white man, tied to Pharaoh, tied to Caesar. But through God, I believe I can wake him up. So Jesus, when he saw where the enemy had laid Lazarus, he called and said, Lazarus, come forth. He told somebody, loose him and let him go. Huh? Because his hands was tied. You tied. I got to go to work. His feet were tied. I, I, I can't go to no I got to work. But on a Monday, two million black men defied Caesar and came to Washington, D.C. Is that right? And now among many religious circles, that is being called a miracle. And right after Jesus resurrected Lazarus, the Jews and Pontius Pilate and the government of Rome met and said, my God, we got to stop this man, Jesus. If we don't stop him, he's going to have the whole world coming after him. And after Jesus resurrected Lazarus, read your book. He left and went to a far country. After the minister resurrected and called the black men into Washington, he went on a friendship tour around the world. Oh, man, look here. All praise is due to Allah. Look at it. So we thank Allah for the boldest, the most courageous. Huh? I'm talking about a man who fears nothing. A man who speaks the truth even if you don't understand him. Watch his works because his works bring good fruit. So we thank Allah for that man in our midst today of whom I am a student of. That man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and that all of their holy and righteous names, I greet you all today on Mother's Day. In the greeting words of peace, Assalamu alaikum. How's everyone doing? All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, you all would have to help me in giving a wonderful round of applause because we in the nation of Islam believe that no nation can rise any higher than its woman. We're not Arabs and we don't practice Arab culture. We don't believe that our women should walk 10 paces behind us. That's culture. That's not in Quran. Is that right? We don't believe that a woman cannot can't be uh, inspired of the word of God that she can't teach in the mosque. That's sexism. Huh? We don't believe that. We believe that if the woman can give birth to the prophet, certainly she can teach men. Is that right? 
No sexism in America. We want unadulterated Islam, not Islam bit with culture. You should give every day should be Mother's Day. Is that right? One day out of 365 days. White folks, y'all crazy. Every day is Mother's Day. Is that right? So help me in welcoming and thanking Minister Aisha Muhammad, who did a wonderful job. Give her a wonderful round of applause. One of our most brilliant female student ministers. And we're all students. Let's give a hand to Minister Charles who opened us up. Let's give him a round of applause as well. All praise is due to Allah. Dear sisters, every day, happy Mother's Day to all of the sisters and females in our mosque today. Uh, happy Mother's Day, dear sisters, and may Allah bless every day to be happy for you. And those of us who know the Lord will have a happy every day. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, welcome to Muhammad's Mosque number 27. Welcome to the hour dedicated to truth, where you know what we're doing. Our dear brother, Reverend Price, of whom we thank Allah and owe a debt of gratitude, have made known to millions, tens of millions of people, a book entitled Message to the Black Man. Now, if you are of another ethnic group, don't feel like this is racism. You're going to have to know about our history to know why we'll teach in progressive stages. You can't come to a dead people with a perfected religion to a people who lost the knowledge of themselves. Lost our name, our language, and our culture. Is that right? So you would have to bear with us, but we thank Reverend Price for letting the world of Christendom into a book called Message to the Black Man. Yeah. Our only problem with you, sir, is that you flip around in the book and you really never give it its due in its proper context, but that's not for you to do, that's for me to do. So we want to answer some of the questions of our Christian uh, pastors, those like Brother Reverend Price and others. We're not attacking or coming in a vile spirit. We may talk strong, but it ain't anti. We have to talk strong so that we can pierce an ignorant mind and touch the core of your being where God is laying dormant, waiting on the right spirit to touch it so that you can sit up and for the first time in your life hear the truth. All right? All praises are due to Allah. We don't want to be tricked into this propaganda machine called America. From what I understand, we have one of our Muslim brothers that is with us today from Bosnia. Is that right? Would you please stand, our brother from Bosnia, one of our Muslim brothers out of Bosnia. <laughs> Honored to have you here today, dear brother. And we would like to say to this onslaught of some false propaganda. Not by our Muslim brothers who are suffering in Europe, but it's strange to me that America, who have declared since the fall of Russia, check this out now, since the fall of Russia, America have gotten rid of all of her enemies, is that right? There is no more Cold War, you think. After the fall, the so-called fall of Russia, America told the world who her next enemy was. And America said that her enemy is fundamentalist Islam. Because she wants to stop the spread of Islam. So I don't know what she's doing in this cry of bringing our brothers and sisters 
from this ethnic cleansing in Europe, but I want to say to my brother from Bosnia, there's some ethnic cleansing in America of a whole people, the black people in America. Huh? There is ethnic cleansing. How do you know? Birth control is a part of ethnic cleansing. Is that right? Criminalizing a whole people is a part of ethnic cleansing. The removal of black men through crime because now prisons is on the stock market. Fortune 500 companies are investing in prison so we ain't too sure what America is doing but we don't trust her. You can trust her if you want to. You looking at a people who have trusted her for 400 years and we ain't got nothing yet from her. Is that right? To hell with America and her false friendships with peoples of the world. You don't believe that America is a lying government? Talk to the Native Americans. Huh? Over 3,000 treaties with the Indians and every one was broken. And here we are in America talking trash as a people and Indians are still on reservations. This used to be their land. Hmm. Yeah, okay. America is a rogue nation. Yeah, she's, you know, in the black community we say roguish. That means you steal, right? right? Don't tell me she can't steal. She stole you. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? Yeah, you still a prisoner of war. Right. You have not been freed. Right. Huh? She just emancipated you. The word emancipate comes from a Latin word, mancipera, meaning to free from our hand, but not from our control. We have put these niggas in our matrix system called Christianity. Now we're coming at something. Y'all all right? Brothers and sisters, many of us in the nation came out of Christianity, grew up in Christianity. Is that right? As Muslims, we are not anti-Jesus. Reverend Price, no. You can't be a Muslim if you don't believe in Jesus. We just don't make Jesus an equal to Almighty God Allah. God have no equals. Jesus told you, Reverend Price, he said, I am not greater than he who sent me. Why you keep trying to make him equal to the God? We just don't, we don't believe that Jesus taught a religion called Christianity. Some people in Europe came up with that religion. Huh? Jesus taught freedom, justice, and equality. He never gave the religion a name. 44 years after he died at Antioch, huh? they called his followers after him. This is a problem of most of the world. They name God's religion after personalities. Y'all all right? Yes, Reverend Price, to recap, you say Jesus is Christianity. Wrong. If he is, show us where he said that. Some Christian, please come to the mosque. Show me where Jesus said, I am Christianity. Show it to me in his words and I'll follow you. You can't. It ain't in the Bible. We believe in the teachings of Jesus. We don't believe, Reverend Price and others, that the Bible is a holy book. What? Why do you believe it? What proof do you have that is holy? 
We got a whole people called the black man and woman in America who follow a book based on hearsay. In fact, most of everything you believe as a Christian is hearsay. But when you put it to the test, let's see who said it. You go back into my series, we've shown you where the scholar, the European scholars told you they tampered with the book. Y'all all right? Dear Christian brothers and sisters, look on every Bible. The word revised means to change. The word version mean to give my understanding, my interpretation, based on what? My experiences. Version mean to get one to lean toward my understanding. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Remember, the Seventh-day Adventist prophetess, yes, Dr. White. Come on, come on. Reading the preface and the volumes of her writing, she writes these words, Reverend Price. Now, if you got a problem with her, I want to see you do a series against the Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> huh? Reverend Price, do you have a problem with the Pope of Rome? Because in his Bible, he's got 73 books, but in yours, you got 66 books. Who's wrong? You are the Pope. Do you have a problem with Catholics? When are you going to do a series against them? Y'all all right? <laughs> she writes, copyists, copyists, copyists have taken the original manuscript of God. Reverend Price says that you must always go to the oldest known source for the actual facts. But he don't do that. Right? Since we've been doing this series. He said the Bible came before the Quran. So therefore, if the Bible came first, then you must go to all this known source. The question is, dear Christian brothers and sisters, which year are you talking about, Reverend Price? And which Bible are you talking about? You talking about 1971? Or are you talking about the one that was revised in 1952? Are you talking about the one in 1582? Or are you talking about the one in 1881? Reverend Price, you're talking about the one in 1611? Or are you talking about the Bishop Bible, the Geneva Bible, the Great Bible, the Matthews Bible, the Coverdale Bible, the Tyndale Bible, the Wycliffe Bible, the Borget Bible, the ancient versions, ancient copies, most ancient copies? Or are you talking about the original manuscript? Which one, Christians? Which one y'all follow? Uh, She writes, Dr. White, she said, men of Europe took the Bible so that it would lean toward their understanding. Now, in 1582, we know what they was beginning to understand because their understanding was based on white supremacy. Right. Reverend Price, when you did your series on racism, why don't you tell the people how racism affected the Bible? Right. Right. See, you don't want to go there. That's right. Because you will have to expose who you really follow. That's right. You don't follow Jesus. Right. You follow some white scholars out of Europe who didn't even put all the books in the Bible. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is a compilation of tens of thousands of books, but in the New Testament, they only put four main books in there and everything else are letters from Paul. All right. All right. In 1582 now, if the Europeans were so godly in their understanding of scripture, why at the same time they were revising the books, you was being brought into America as slaves? By Christians. 
Why didn't you go back to 1582, Reverend Price? She says that the scholars got together to get the book to lean toward their understanding. So when you're translating it out of its original tongue to English, these men wanted it to lean. Right. Not stand up straight. Right. They wanted it to lean toward their understanding. Right. There were 32 scholars who did this. Was there any black ones at the table? No, were there any Japanese at the table? No, were there any Chinese at the table? No, were there any so-called Mexicans at the table? Where was the Native Americans? You didn't go far enough in your white racism part, Reverend Price. Right, right. It's not. <laughs> okay. We have shown many contradictions in the Bible. We believe in the truth of the Bible, but we know it's been tampered with. I'm going to read one more time to you. If you go to the 19, or either a, any version before 1971, it's written right in the preface of every Bible. If you would read it and stop following religion based on hearsay, Reverend Price said, before he commit his life to some, he got to check it out thoroughly. You missed some, partner. The Revised Standard Version. They normally refer to that book as the RSV. Right in the beginning of the book, the preface, say preface. Preface. It says the King James Version has, with good reason, been termed the noblest monument of English prose. Its revisers in 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expression, and its mu music cadences. Yet, the King James Version have grave defects. That these defects are so many and so serious as to call for another revision. Yes, Reverend Price, talk to me. This is why, Reverend Price, we've asked you to meet in private. But you have refused every meeting. Today I'm going to show you, I, I didn't believe that this brother would just make up stuff and lie on the nation. Right. Come on. He's now taking our book, Message to the Black Man, thinking he got an original copy. Because our books have been tampered with by the enemy and hypocrites. You got to know this, Muslims. Because many of us, when we hear it, we get shook in our foundation. I humbly respect you, sir, but I, again, don't be a liar and a deceiver. That's why you should meet with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He's a humble brother. He'll show you what he believes to be the correct way. And again, brothers and sisters, we're going to show you if the Bible is holy, it means it is without any contradiction. There would be no contradictions, but I've shown you so many. If you go back over my series, Reverend Price, and I'm sending him every tape. Hopefully he'll meet with me. I'm just a student. Uh, I'm just a youngster, son of a student. Oh, man, you don't want to really read with my daddy, do you? We just students in this. But we want to be humble because we understand, Reverend Price, the same dog that bit you bit us. Hey. 
We believe in the truths of the Bible, but we believe it's been tampered with. To our Christian brothers and sisters, now Reverend Price, even the Jehovah Witnesses write in their Awake magazine, their scholars. In 1957, September the 8th, September the 8th, 1957, go look it up on the internet, the Awake magazine. Their scholars found 50,000 errors in the Bible. Now, are you going to teach against the Jehovah Witnesses? This is where we are today, brothers and sisters. Again, remember, the 32 scholars that was put together in 1952... They, the 52 scholars, and it was 50 different denominations of Christendom, of Europe. Africans did not tamper with the Bible. When they was tamping with the Bible, you was on a ship named Jesus. The first ship that brought us over here was named Jesus in 1555 from a white slave trader out of Great Britain called Sir John Hawkins. Go look that up, Reverend Price. You don't deal with us, you better get some root knowledge and get off the branches. I've shown you in the Bibles, here are the books of the Bible, Reverend Price, and to my Christian brothers and sisters. If the Bible is the inspired word of God, why is it that they don't know who the authors of many of the books are? I've shown you that on this section right here. We showed you in the book of Psalms, of which I'm going to deal with today, they said in the book of Psalms, they said that the author principally is David, though there are other writers. Who are the other writers? Come on, Come on. Come on, man. They said principally David. But there's some other writers. Reverend Price, who are the other writers? Come on, request. In one book, Trying to find it. They were saying they don't know. Who. Oh, in Ecclesiastes, the author, they said, doubtful. <laughs> now, they, before I even tell you who they, they said, doubtful, but commonly, commonly assigned to Solomon. Who's doing the signing? <laughs> doubtful, but commonly assigned to Solomon. <laughs> Who's doing the assigning here, Reverend Price? Did you assign it to Solomon? <laughs> Ruth, Arthur, not definitely known, perhaps Samuel. They talking about perhaps Samuel. Listen to these scholars, these wicked deceivers in the good name of Jesus, hiding behind Jesus to practice a dirty religion, Reverend Price. Now, but that don't get some Muslims off the hook. There are some Muslims who uses the name of Muhammad to do to have slaves too. This is why we won't follow no Arabs. We'll listen to you. Thank you. Okay. All right, I got it. And I take that and work it as a black man. They got one book in here that they are claiming the book of Isaiah, Arthur, mainly credited to Isaiah. Parts may have been written by others. I want to know what parts was written by others because I don't want that part. Y'all all right? Now, let me show you some in the book of Psalms because Shakespeare was one of the writers. Shakespeare was a poet. He wasn't no man of the theology of the gospel. You go look up the history. Shakespeare was one of the writers of the Bible. I can't believe you didn't get this in theology school, Reverend Price. Oh, you got it. But they told you not to tell nobody. 
because they teach in theology school that Christianity is big business. Reverend Price even copyrighted his own version of the Bible. Ooh. No wonder he used the word I so much. I this, I that. When you hear a man saying what he do, that's a vain man. That's an arrogant man using the ninth letter of the alphabet, which, alphabet which is only relegated to God himself. That's why in the Quran he said, I am the best Noah. Not Reverend Price. Reverend Price is not even in his original name. He don't even know his price ain't right. He needs to come on down to the mosque and be the next contestant for becoming a Muslim. Huh? Got his own Bible to price. What was the price, Price? Guess what the price of his Bible? I'll give you a case of Reverend Price's Bibles. If you read in Psalms 46, Shakespeare was upset because they wouldn't let him sign his name to some of the books of Psalms. So he coded his name in the book. He did it based on his age. He was 46 years old at the time of the writing. And if you go to Psalms 46, if you start at the top, the beginning word, Count 46 words down and you get the word shake. If you go to the end of the uh, book of Psalms, ver uh, book 46, starting with verse 1, count the words. Count 46 words down, you get shake. Go to the bottom, starting with refuge in verse 11. Count 46 words backwards, you get the word spear. See? Reverend Price, you'll see in here, he's going to admit that the Bible has been coded. We know. Shakespeare coded his name in it, Reverend Price. Shake, spear. Want to give you a backdrop. He said Islam is Muhammad. That's wrong. Islam don't belong to Muhammad. No, Islam belongs to Allah, not Muhammad. Muhammad was just a prophet. And he is not to be worshipped. Is that right? I don't want to follow no religion that comes from a man. You can have that religion. Minister Farrakhan said, oh, give me no religion that some man is the author of. Right. Give me the religion of God. Right. And all throughout the Bible, God in the Bible always said his way is peace. Right. In Arabic, that would be Islam. Right. Because once you submit your will to do the will of God, you and God are at peace. Right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to stop here and get ready to roll the tape. What you're going to be hearing, I mean, it's, it's sort of, I mean, the cat. I don't believe Reverend Price. I feel sorry for that brother. But he's probably going to be a good Muslim one day. I can see him now, 500 final calls a week. 700 bean pies a day. He might become the Western Regional Representative. I please. I ain't mad. There's plenty of room in the nation. Is that right? Please. I want you to pay close attention to what he's getting ready to do. Speaking on message to the black man, somebody, as he was studying his series to come against us or question us, somebody sent him something in the mail about message to the black man that he's going to try to use 
as a validation of his point. Dealing with the copyright and the publishing of message to the black man. Note that when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left the scene, all of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's books, not all, but many grabbed hold of many of his books. There are several publishing companies out there who publish his message to the black man. The Nation of Islam, we publish, his, we publish our own books. But hypocrites and agents may have added to and taken some things out. But I'm going to let Reverend Price get his point out. But I want you to watch it. Would you roll the tape? You think I'm going into the jewelry business. <laughs> You ever, you ever see pictures of, especially in the movies, you see it where they got all these stones and you'll see the guy get the little, there's a little name for it, I don't know what it is, but it's a little eye thing they put up there and you see the guy hold it up to the light, look, do you think he's just looking at glass? He's looking inside that stone. If it is a diamond, a real diamond, there's something inside the stone that will tell you it's real. If you don't see that inside that stone, you may have glass. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, now, Mr. Muhammad is called the messenger of Allah, or God. Therefore, I would think that if he is Allah's messenger, he gets his message direct from God. From Allah, in other words. Whoever God is, I think that all of us would agree that he is divine. And should know the future as easily as we humans know the past. Now based on that, God's messenger, speaking on behalf of God, could never predict or prophesy something that would be proven historically to be incorrect or untrue. Now you listen to this, you Muslims that think and have swallowed this line about Allah being the same as Jehovah or Yahweh of the Christians. Mm -mm. Because if they were the same God, just operating under different names, They'd have to say the same thing. Or they would, we, the, the Muslims wouldn't know whether they got the true one, or the Christians wouldn't know they had the true one. So if it's the same God, he got to say the same thing. He would have to have the same message, and he would have to have the same purpose. Amen. Even if he were manifesting himself through two different avenues, Islam, Christianity, if it's the same God, he can't be going counter to himself. Amen. Uh huh? Amen. I mean, if it's the same God, he go, north is still going to be north. Amen. It won't become south if it's the same God, right? right? Now watch this. On page 110. Mr. Muhammad makes a statement that illustrates my point. I think it is vitally important that every Christian, Muslim, and those who would become members of the Nation of Islam examine this statement closely. Under the heading, I quote, the devil, colon, the making of devil, colon. She Referring to America, Mr. Muhammad says, she holds a whole nation, and then in brackets, so-called Negroes prisoner, and refuses to open the door of freedom, justice, and equality to them. She threatens to go to war against other nations who hold any of her citizens prisoners. Thank you. Pay close attention, because if you got a message to the black man, this part is not in there. Right. Somebody added that in. Right. I've talked to several of the followers prior to 1975. I talked to Minister Joel in Phoenix, 
who faxed me a copy of the one he purchased in 1966. Now I'm going to show you some. I want you to watch him. Because he's only going to show you the copyright, but he's not going to tell you when it was published. He's flipped the script. He's making you think that the one that's been revised, and if he come to the mosque, there are many books that some of the older followers have that is authentic. I have a copy. He's going to show you the front of what he's calling the original copy. And that's where we're going to stop it again. But this part, which can't and won't be done. Now, Elijah Muhammad never said that. In fact, in the theology of time, he said, and when they get to the moon, they'll find out it's a piece of dead earth. Because we taught that the moon used to be a part of the earth, but was blown away. And I don't, you slow your road. If you don't know no history, shut up. You don't know what you, hell, you can't even think 20 years ago. And when the astronauts land on the moon, you go back and listen to the transcript. One of them said that moon smelled like it was gunpowder on it. And when they found the rocks and brought them back and examined it, they say the rocks are the exact same rocks that's on the planet Earth. But let him go. Run, run this cat. Lions. And to build a small contraption to try circling the Earth like our moon, which we have made to revolve around the Earth. End of quote. Now, I want to put up the uh, copyright page, gentlemen, page nine, uh, the 1965 copyright. I want you to show me the cover of the book first. I want this, I want this to get, I want you to this see. This is supposed to be the 1965 I'm ready for the cover. cover of the book, Message of the Black Man in America. Stop it right there. Stop it. If you had a came to the mosque, slickster, and if you had a set with us, liar, this is not the original copy of the front page of Message of the Black Man. This is the original copy. This is an old book. The first books didn't have his picture on the book, Reverend Price. The messenger never put his picture on the front of the book. And none of them was paperback. All of his books was hardback. Message to the black man. This one's... Now, this one came after 1975. This was put on the cover of the book. But that's not the original cover. You lying. Run it. Diversion. All right. That's the book, Message of the Black Man in America by Elijah Muhammad. Turn the page to the, uh, where the copyright is. I want you to see this. Don't think I'm just dreaming this up. Trying to get on somebody's case. Can you see it? Message to the black man in America, copyright 1965. Publisher of uh, one of the versions of Message to the Black Man. But he won't show us the publisher of the original one. Run it. Elijah Muhammad, printed in the United States of America, all rights reserved. Everybody see that? All right, now let's go to page 110, gentlemen, in that same book. Page 110. And I want you to see what I just quoted. Because I'm getting ready to quote something else that will blow up your boat. Now, I hope you can see that. Can you see that? I know you can, as old as I am, I can see that. I know y'all young folks can see that. <laughs> All right, watch it. Notice she holds a whole nation, see the brackets, uh, so-called Negroes prisoner, and refuses to open the door of freedom, justice, and equality to them. Freeze it. She... This one reads, she holds a whole nation so-called Negroes prisoner 
and refuses to open the door of freedom, justice, and equality to them. She threatens to go to war against any nations who hold any of her citizens prisoners. You've seen that recently. They now boast of building rockets to land on our moon and to build a small contraption to try circling the earth like our moon, which we have made to revolve around the earth. It's nowhere in the old version of Mess to the Black Man, which can't and won't be done. Right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad don't even put words like that in bracket. Right. He always put so-called Negro. He always put a law or God in brackets, right. but never that many words. No, that's not, I'm telling you, he's lying. Right. Either he's doing it ignorantly or he's doing it intentionally, but you're lying, Reverend Price. Now run the tape. Threatens to go to war against other nations who will hold any of her children or citizens prisoner. Now, the underlying part said, they now boast of building rockets to land on the moon. Notice the brackets, which can't and won't be done. And to build a small contraption to try circling the earth like our moon, which we have made to revolve around the earth. See, when it says we have made, remember I showed you the other part where Mr. Elijah Muhammad says that black folk are the ones that created everything. So we had to, we had to create it. We created, created the white folks and everybody else. Okay? That's, That's right. what they say. We covered that. Now, I'm ready now for the 1997 copyrighted edition of Message to the Black Man in America. May I see the cover of that book, please? Followed immediately Stop. by the... Many the books that we copyright in the nation, we don't have the color. We have the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in black and white. Not in color. Black and white. Not in color. Black and white, Reverend Price. Where in the hell did you get this book from? Run it. Page. All right, there it is again. That's the same cover. This is a 1997. Let's see the copyright page. Difference between 1996, Stop. 1960. Come on. See. Why didn't he show us the copyright of the one that he says was the original one? Right. He just showed you. You know, he didn't show you to see this one is giving you the publisher. That's right. Then look at who, who re reprinted it in 1997 by Messenger Elijah Muhammad Propagation Society. Oh, yeah. Who in the hell is the Propagation Society? <laughs> read like this. Man, this one's so old, it's tearing apart. 1965. It has, all of ours have published by Muhammad Temple number two. 7351 Stony Island Avenue. We don't know who in the hell the Propagation Society is. This is not our book. Under Louis Farrakhan, it has published by Muhammad Temple number two. Now, if you'd have had Muhammad Temple number two, maybe you would have had us. But you got published by Messenger Elijah Muhammad Propagation Society. It says this reprint is under the auspices of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. This is under the auspices of the Propagation Society. Sound like the CIA FBI to me. <laughs> Lying hypocrite. <laughs> it was all right if you'd have told the truth. You are a liar on this one. And you need to apologize for what you just did. Because if he would have sit with us, we would have showed him. Somebody gave you the wrong book, partner. Who sent it to you, Reverend Price? Run it. In 1997, would you agree? 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Copyright 1965. That was the one we just read, the first one. Now he published by, it. published and reprinted 1997 by Messenger Elijah Muhammad, Propagation Society, et cetera, et cetera. Et now cetera, let's go to okay. page 110. Same page. He saw it. Oh, oh, God. I went too far with it. And let's see how perceptive you are. That's it. Take it out. She holds. Go to the next tape. Man, did you see that? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, and to our audience and to the television audience, you go to any mosque, you look in our books. And even those of us in various mosques, we better look into our books. If you are getting books from somewhere else other than Muhammad, Temple number two, you are not carrying the authentic books of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We publish our own books. We never call no propagation society to publish nothing for us. Man is lying. And then we took that part off because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't predict right. Where, where is that book? What did I do with it? Now, I'm going to show you something here. In that same, on that same page, talking about he got to prophesy the truth. It reads, this next paragraph after that, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, the following is from the Holy Quran. Strong gods in what? Flames. Did one of them shuttles get caught up in a flame trying to get up in there? They don't want it on it. And we the devils used to sit in some of the sitting places thereof to steal a hearing. This is in the Quran because the devil wanted to get in heaven so he could listen to the world. What does satellites do? See, this is why America, through her satellites, she can look at the dirt in Kosovo and tell that the dirt have been turned. But then she claims that in the Sudan, they got slaves. You mean you can see some dirt turned but can't show me a slave on the satellite? This is the Quran. And still a hearing. But he who tries to listen now finds a flame lying in wait for him. That's Holy Quran, Surah 72, verse 8 and 9. Was a flame lying in wait for one of them shuttles? It's going to be some more. It's going to be a flame in America. It's beginning to start already. One of their white students tried an ethnic cleansing in Colorado. He was after minorities and athletes. And one of the things you don't realize is one of those young boys was a Jew. Clay boy. You don't even know Jewish names. Brother Nuri again gave me some good information from the Jewish newspaper, which they claim one of those children was one of their own. You want to accuse Minister Farrakhan of being a hater and an anti-Semite? Yeah, one of your own children is turned into an anti-Semite. Roll the tape. No, hold on. Right here, brothers and sisters, Reverend Price, we're going into dealing with the resurrection of the dead. Once again, he's going to read from Message to the Black Man because many Christians and even some Muslims believe that people who die and go in the ground, they believe they're going to come back. We don't believe in the resurrection of the physical dead. We believe in the resurrection of the mental and spiritually dead people. Now, we will show you by using Bible. Roll the tape. We may not be able to get through all of this, brothers and sisters. Muslims and the Bible, the Holy Book of the Christians, are by the same author 
wouldn't they have to say the same thing yeah. about the same subjects? Wouldn't they? Yeah. Also, it would seem to me that if in fact this were true, that both gods are basically the same God, they are the same God under a different name, then the prophets of each one, the messenger of each one, Jesus Christ and Muhammad, and then of course Elijah Muhammad, who was uh, the, the messenger of Allah, they would both have the same respect for the holy books. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Now watch this. Everywhere in this book, message to the black man, it says the same thing about the same books. Listen to this. See if you can pick up on this. This is how many of our people have been suckered in. Listen, I want to ask you a question. On page 97, under the heading, I quote, the Bible and Holy Quran, colon, which one is right? Question mark. You see anything in that statement? What do you, what do you see? Okay, they're supposed to be the same, so why would they be wrong? Okay, anybody else see anything in there? Yeah, isn't that strange? Every single time the messenger of Allah refers to the Quran, it's always the Holy Quran, but it's never the Holy Bible, it's only the Bible. Stop, stop the My tape. point is that... He Thank you, Reverend Price. Good looking out. If it's holy, then that means it's perfect. By his rule, one book speaking of the same incidents would say what? The same thing. That's what he said. If it don't say the same thing, somebody wrong. Therefore, it can't be holy. It ain't perfect. Walk over here with me. Pull out your Bibles if you're at home. Go get that Gideon Bible you stole out of that hotel where you were sitting at. If you just find one contradiction, it's enough. If you get my series, I've shown you, God willing, over 40 contradictions in the Bible. Concerning the genealogy of Jesus, there's only two places where the genealogy of Jesus now. If Jesus is of the seed of God, the genealogy shouldn't be this long. Right. If God impregnated Mary, right. you know, if God and Mary, you know, <laughs> uh -uh -uh, but see, her, she had an immaculate conception. Mm -hmm. Let your daughter come home and say a spirit came upon her. <laughs> she don't know how she got pregnant. <laughs> They didn't believe it then, and neither were you. Right. A law was broken in one sense, but permitted by God in another sense. Right. Now, here in the genealogy of Jesus, Matthews 1 verses, chapter 1, verses 6 through 16, according to Matthews, according to Luke, chapter 3, verses 23 through 31, in terms of Jesus' ancestry line, they're naming all of his granddaddies. Number one, they both start with David and end with Joseph. But in between, the names are not the same. Matthew says Jesus got 26 people in his downline. Luke said he's got 41 people in his downline. Reverend Price, which one of these are true? Come on. It should say the same thing. Now, where is Mary in this whole genealogy? Showing you that Mary had sex with a man, and those two men appear to be Joseph, because Jesus come out of Joseph's genealogy. He was the man that carried the seed. Uh -huh. 
Go to the book of Romans. Yes, chapter 1. Verse 3. Jesus was a son of God according to the seed of David and only declared to be the son of God based on his spirit. Not of the physical, but of the spirit only. Which one of these are right? That's why Reverend Price, in the preface of 1971 and 1952, in the Douay Bible, they tell you they tampered with it by virtue of the fact they call it revise means to change. Anytime you change the original words and writings of God and not give us the original books right along with it, how are we to determine if it hasn't been changed or not? We just going to believe white folks? It was white folks that gave you the Bible. Roll the tape. Allah it's not holy. doesn't have respect for Jehovah. So that when he talks about his books, he doesn't call both of them holy. That's my point. Okay. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> On page 97 under the heading, quote, the Bible and Holy Quran, colon, which one is right? Question mark. The New Testament and Holy Quran's teaching of the resurrection of the dead can't mean the people who have died physically and returned to the earth, but rather a mental resurrection of us, the black nation, who are mentally dead to the knowledge of truth, the truth of self, God, and the arch enemy of God and his people. End of quote. Now, pick up on this. You black folk get this now. The New Testament and Holy Quran's teaching of the resurrection of the dead can't mean the people who have died physically and returned to the earth, but rather a mental resurrection of us, the black nation. So he's saying that when the New Testament, the Quran and the New Testament talk about resurrection, it's talking about mental resurrection and it's only talking about black folk. So the white folks are left out, the yellow folks, the red folks, and the brown folks are left out. So the New Testament doesn't have anything to say about resurrection except about black people. Don't tell you not you don't you're not picking up on anything here? You don't get that there's some there's something here lopsided on this thing. Stop now. Stop it. Very quickly. God, many of the scholars would tell you, exists on three planes. Spiritual, mental, and physical. In order to understand how a people can be resurrected, you got to understand the various levels of death. When a man or woman turn away from God, the first level of death is spiritual. When a man or woman is taken out of their land into a strange land and you change their name, you change their language, you change their culture, you have mentally killed them. We don't even know who we are. What is your name, black man? He's but he not saying the white man. He's not saying the brown man or the yellow man. Every Japanese can tell you where they're from. Every Japanese can tell you where in Japan they used to live. Every Chinese that's in America can tell you they're from China and walk you back to the village that they came out of. We have a brother here visiting from Europe called Bosnia. He can take you back to Bosnia where he grew up at. Can you do that? You just say Africa. But when we say specifically where? Oh no. You try to give your genealogy. You give your, you can't. Many of us can't even run our family tree back one generation. Hell, half of us don't even know our daddy. We can't even claim his side of the family. 
You are a lost people, a rejected people. And we died because the book of Jeremiah said, my people have committed two evils. They have given me up the true and living God and have taken on another God that does not profit them. What people left their religion for another one? Talk to me. What is your original name, black man? That's why they told Kuta Kente, you told me. They wanted to bring him out of that name because his name is so powerful. If he remember the meaning of it, no Muslim can allow a man to make him a slave. That's why they didn't want Islam, Reverend Price, taught in America because you cannot enslave a Muslim's mind. He said, our hearts, huh? there is no God but Allah. You can't make no Muslim a slave, Reverend Price. We don't call the white man master. Only Allah. So we are mentally, we are the only people that can't tell you where we from. We just say Africa. But specifically where? You don't know. You can't remember. Remember Jesus said, and when he the spirit of truth is come. He will bring to your remembrance all things that you had even forgotten. We forgot our name. We forgot our language. We lost our culture. We lost our mind. You and I are mentally dead. That's why you ain't got to teach the black man religion, Reverend Price. If you teach him his history, he'll walk back into his religion. Run the tape. Following somebody. See, I'm suspect. If you lie to me about anything, then I don't trust you on nothing else. You, you got to, I don't know how you got to do lie. Because then I don't know when, if you were that bold to lie to me the first time, then I don't know when you may decide to lie to me again. <laughs> now, I have studied, I have studied now for 45 years. Check out. Jesus Christ. And I haven't found him telling a lie yet. I heard that. I, I, I agree with that. Man. I have read the New Testament through probably hundreds of times. Listen, that's my standard reading procedure. I read five chapters of the Bible every day. And all I do is start at Matthew, go to Revelation, start, go back to Matthew, go to Revelation, go back to Matthew, go to Revelation. I just, I do that all the time, apart from any other specific studies that I may do with the Bible. Or every once in a while, I'm led to go back and go through the Old Testament. Primarily, I read the New Testament because Stop. that's the cover. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Sound like he got a problem with the Old Testament. Primarily, I just read the New Testament. He said he's been reading it for 45 years. He know it backwards and forwards. We're going to see. He said Jesus don't tell lies. He's right. But he's getting ready to try to prove his point that the physical dead is coming back, but he ain't going to read Jesus' writing. He's going to read Paul's writing. Yes, but wait when I tell you, wait until I teach you on who Paul was and what Paul said about his own writing. Yes, How did Paul let us to the church become a holy book? Paul didn't even walk with Jesus. Oh, we're getting ready to now. Now, 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 now. What one of his rules was, you got to believe in the oldest known source because it has more power. The Old Testament came before the New Testament. You should believe more in the Old Testament then, Reverend Price. These are your rules, sucker. I mean, brother. See, he make a rule and then break it, but he want to hold us to the rule, which we're going to remain true to it. Y'all all right? You started this, Reverend Price. Primarily, I just, I'm, I'm under the New Testament. See, a lot of Christians, that's your problem. When we, the Muslim, bring things up to your attention, you say, oh, that's the Old Testament. Wait a minute, it's, you say it's a holy book, though. Now, I'm going to see if what he's getting ready to read from Paul, do Paul agree with the book of Job? About physical resurrection. 
Because in one part of the Bible it says once the body dies and go to the ground, it's never coming back. Jesus even say he go never to return. But he'll send another one in his name. And that one will testify of me. Oh, run the tape. Run it, back it up a little bit. I want to hear this now. again. I want to lean on him this time. Oops. All right, that's good. Oh, the time, man, we gotta go. Apart from any other specific studies that I may do with the Bible, or every once in a while, I'm led to go back and go through the Old Testament. Primarily, I read the New Testament because that's the covenant that I'm under. I have done this now for 28 years. Now, you can imagine I must have gone through the New Testament a lot of times in 28 years. Because all I do, I start at Matthew, I read verse by verse, chapter by chapter. I go from Matthew to the end of Revelation, back to Matthew to the end of Revelation, back to Matthew to the end of Revelation, back to Matthew, the end of Revelation, back to Matthew. I, I just do that all the time, plus other specific studies that I may do. I, I haven't caught Jesus in a lie yet. That's right. But I'm catching Mr. Muhammad here in a lie. Watch this now. This is a quote. I'm not attacking. I'm pointing out what he said, and I'm questioning, is what he said true? If it is true, it'll stand examination. The only people that don't want you to check it out are the ones that are phony because they don't want to be found out. If it's true, I want you to check me out and know I am telling you the truth. Take your best shot. Okay, now watch this. Under the heading, quote, the Bible and Holy Quran, colon, which one is right, question mark. The New Testament and Holy Quran's teaching of the New Testament. Say New Testament. New Testament. And Holy Quran's teaching of the resurrection of the dead can't mean. Say can't mean. Can't mean. Can't mean the people who have died physically and return to the earth, but rather a mental resurrection of us, the black nation, who are mentally dead to the knowledge of truth, the truth of self, God, and the arch enemy of God and his people. Stop it. Are we mentally dead? End of quote. Are you mentally dead to the knowledge of yourself? If not, what village in Africa did you come from? What was your name before you got the white man's name? If you're under the name Harris, Smith, Price, these names will take you back to the plantation where your and my people was held. What was our name before they imposed the name on our name? We say what our brother in the movie, I'm going to start saying, give us free. Run the tape. Now, now, we have a very simple way of finding out if this is true. That's right. Fight it. You're doing a good job. Fight it. Okay? But we can easily find out if it's true. All we have to do is go to the New Testament. And everywhere the New Testament says anything about resurrection, it ought to be talking about black people. And it should say something about mental. He said it. I didn't. He said it. it's not talking about physical. It's talking about mental. Okay, fine. If it is, then it ought to be in the New Testament. I ought to find it in there. It ought to be talking about black people. And it ought to say something about mental in reference to resurrection. If what he said is true. If I can't find it in the New Testament, then he lied. But if you find it intentionally in or not, that's the bottom line. That's what it ultimately means that he did not tell me the truth. And if he didn't tell me the truth for whatever reason, then it's got to be an untruth. And an untruth is a lie. Amen. You don't have to be black to figure that out. <laughs> okay, let's find out what the New Testament said. He quoted it. I didn't. He's the one that said the New Testament and Holy Quran's teaching of the resurrection of the dead can't mean the people who have died physically. He said it can't mean that. Hey, he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't even say it couldn't mean that. 
Brother, sister, he is absolutely definite. That's set in concrete. He said it can't mean. He didn't say it didn't mean. He said it can't mean. And I want to holler loud enough for them to hear me at the mosque. <laughs> we hear you. Let's look at the New Testament that Mr. Muhammad quoted from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Go ahead, bro. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So every, every place in the New Testament, because he said it, he's the one that said New Testament. I didn't. He did. He wrote the book. I didn't. I'm just checking him out. He said it can't mean physical. It means mental, and it means mental for black people. So resurrection has nothing to say for white people, red people, brown people, and yellow people. Resurrection in the New Testament is only for black people, and it's not physical, it's only mental. Stop it. Brothers and sisters, I, I just, this point is so critical. We really should be over at four. Could I let him finish this point? Yes, sir. I mean, please, I... Let him finish this point, yes, and I would like to rebut. Yes, He's getting ready to make an affirmative stand, and I'd like to negate the ground that he's standing on. Now, his rule, you have to go to the oldest known source. What if the Old Testament says something different from the New Testament? Again, we're showing contradictions. All right? Even with what he's getting ready to use in Corinthians. But before he go into Corinthians, I, I may let him get it, but I got to show you what Paul says about his own gospel. Because the question is, was Paul inspired of God? Or did Paul do his own thing? he's going to tell you himself right in the Bible about his own understanding and then you draw the conclusion for yourself I need 15 minutes can I please please brothers and sisters thank you so much run the tape You better know what you're following. True. All right, now here's the New Testament. Here's the New Testament, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Go back. Go back. Run it back. Stop it. <clears throat> now, be careful. God don't use the words perhaps or if. All right? Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised, did he preach it or didn't he? Remember, this is a letter. Corinthians is one of the letters of Paul. It's not a book. It is a letter that he wrote to the church of Corinthians. These are one of his letters, not a book. He's writing to people saying, now if Christ, because he don't really know. He didn't walk with Jesus. When you know something, you don't say now if. You says, and Jesus Christ said. You don't start off now if. Either you know or you don't know. Wake up. Get out of the matrix system. You took the blue pill, Reverend Price. Run it. Some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead. Paul don't even know.
In case your hearing aid wasn't turned up quite loud enough, I'll read it again. First Corinthians. And if you don't know how to spell it, C-O-R-I-N-T-H-I-A-N-S. Chapter 15. And if you don't know what 15 is, it comes after 14. And it's the number right before 16. Verse 12. Which comes after number 11. And just prior to number 13. I just want you to be able to locate it. Now, if Christ is preached that he has, has been raised from the dead, how do some among you, black folk, say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Well, now, I'm, see, I'm an honest person. And so I'll say, okay, all right. See, that verse didn't say, didn't necessarily say anything about the body per se, just said from the dead. So we could kind of slide over here a little bit and I'll be willing to give Mr. Muhammad a little bit of credibility there because it doesn't actually say, but it doesn't say mental either. <clears throat> so we're kind of in, you know, kind of in between. But why okay. are you there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Trot over to verse 42. Same chapter, verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body, not the mind. The body is sown in corruption, it, and it is referring to the subject body, is raised in incorruption. Hold on. Is he a doctor? Run it back. Back it up a little bit. So also is the Was there a verse before this one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, stop it. Because listen. Just hold it. There are many Bibles, brothers and sisters, and they all don't say the same thing. That's why we are confused. There are many people that are reading their Bibles right now said they, they Bibles don't even say that at all. <laughs> and that's from his church. No, this is the one used to use. Oh, the Dykes? Dykes Bible. She's reading from the Dakes Bible and it don't say none of that. There's one up here, um, the international version that don't say that either. Which Bible are you using, Reverend Price? There are over 200 different Bibles. I'm a little confused. I don't know which one he used. Let it go. Run it. Because we got to get out of here. I got to hit Try these over points. to verse 42. Same chapter, verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body, not the mind. The body is sown in corruption, it, and it is referring to the subject body, is raised in incorruption. Oh, pick up on this now. So also is the resurrection of the dead. So it's, that's actually, so is the resurrection of the dead. That is giving us the definition of the resurrection of the dead. We're going to know right now, whatever comes after that is going to let us know, is it mental or is it physical and is it talking about black folk? Stop it. Let me hit up on this brother right quick. First of all, I want to go to the oldest known source called the Old Testament. I want you to go to the book of Job. Book of what? Based on, Reverend Price, your rules. You say you must go to the oldest known source. Paul did not walk with Jesus. Don't show me what Paul said about the resurrection. Show me what Jesus said about the resurrection and I'll tell you why. I don't really want, even though Paul wrote some good stuff, but he writes on hearsay. During the time that Paul was around, there was no such book as the New Testament. The New Testament had not yet been born as a book. All right? But when he wrote to Timothy, 
He knew that Timothy knew the law of Moses very well because Timothy was a Jew who was converted to Paul's way of thinking when Paul wrote Timothy two letters. Y'all all right? Letters have become books. I don't want Paul's letter. I want Jesus' words. The book of Job, 7th chapter, verse 9 and 10, about the dead, it reads, As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, so he, so he, that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. Now, this is the Bible. We already believe it's been tampered with. Now, maybe... Reverend Price, this ain't right. Then tear that out your Bible, ball it up, because you don't, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. Throw it away. I'm going to read it again. As the cloud is consumed and banished away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house. Neither shall his place know him anymore. Let's go to the book of Job. Chapter 14, what chapter? 14. Verses 10 through 13, it reads, But man dieth and wasted away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and raises not till the heaven be no more. They shall not awake, nor shall nor be raised out of their sleep. Once they, once the body go to the grave, it never comes back. This one says, once man lieth down, he raises not up again, nor will he be awakened from sleep. This is Old Testament. It's older than the New Testament. So, Christians, what are you saying? That ain't true no more? Then why is it still in the Bible? Talk to me. Or is this one of those grave defects? Remember they say it's so many that it needs to be what? Revised again. Right? This is older than the New Testament, Reverend Price. Now you, these are your rules. Run the tape. That's Old Testament. I'm going to hit you some. Okay, verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It, the body, is raised in incorruption. It didn't say your mind said your body. Now the New Testament says body. Mr. Muhammad says mind. Now you're going to call, you say I'm attacking you? You call that an attack? Well, I'm not finished yet. Let's go to the 51st verse of that same chapter. Verse 51 and 52. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, we know that that's talking about... Stop it. What does the Old Testament say? You would never be raised. But this Paul now is talking. You have to understand it was Paul who came up with the resurrection story. Okay, I, let me show you then. I got to tell you what Paul himself said. Let me, in the same book of Corinthians, what book? Let me spell it if you don't know what it, how it spells. The seventh chapter of the first Corinthians. Y'all with me? Various books say different things. Chapter seven, verse 25. Let me read it to you about what he say about himself. Now concerning Virgin, a virgin. He says, I 
have no command of the Lord. I have no commandments. In my one Bible says, I have no commandments of the Lord, but I give my opinion. This is Paul talking, Reverend Price. He said, I have no commandments of the Lord, but I give my opinion. Well, you can't superimpose your opinion on God. Inspired word. One book he says, I give, I, I have no judgment. Judgment and opinion is the same. When you judge somebody, you judge from your opinion. Another Bible in the Phillips Modern English Version, he says, I have no correct, no direct commands from the Lord. Nevertheless, I give my considered opinion. That's in the Phillips Modern English Version. In the same book of Corinthians, a letter. It ain't a book, it's a letter. Uh, 7, chapter 7, verse 12. Paul writes, To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord talking, he said, to the rest I say this, I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. Did the Lord say that? No, sir. He said, I, not the Lord. Letting you know, man, everything that I write is not from the Lord, it's from my opinion. I need some more substantial, Reverend Price, than the book of Corinthians. If you're going to come at the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad, come at us from something that Paul ain't tripping in. Now, let me show you something he really say about himself. Y'all right? In another version of the Bible, Paul says, Oh, my commandments, they are not divine commandments. While in another version of the Bible, he says, to the rest I say this, as my own words, not as the Lord. Go to 2 Corinthians, what? Second Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 17, Paul says, what I am saying, I say not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. Listen to what Paul said about himself. Yes, In his own letter, he's admitting he's a fool. I am saying, at 2 Corinthians 11 and 17, what I am saying, I say not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. In this boastful confidence. He said it as a what? As a fool. Then you can't show me what Paul writes, Reverend Price. The man is saying, first of all, he's never been given any commandments from God or the Lord. He's saying everything that he writes is of his opinion. So how are you going to give me something that Paul said about the resurrection of the dead. Let's go to what Jesus said about the dead. Let's go and see if Jesus show us that God cares anything about the dead. Now, let's go also to 2 Timothy. Y'all with me? Come on, let's let's find. Let's walk him down. You better run, Price. Run, boy. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. What chapter? Verse 8. 
Paul wrote to Timothy, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This is a letter he wrote to Timothy. How did this become a book? Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, he didn't even tell you he's from the seed of God. He's admitting that Jesus Christ is from the seed of David. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, a fool. According to my gospel, which is my opinion. But remember, I got no commandments from the Lord. I am a fool. This is his talking. Y'all ready for this? Let's go to Matthew's, Reverend Price. What book? Chapter 22. Really, verses 16 all the way to 32. Some Sadducees, which was the clergy of Jesus' time, knowing Moses' law, tried to trip Jesus about the resurrection of the dead because they wanted to see what he's trying to change Old Testament. Y'all with me? I'm getting this. This man is a liar. And you got to know that. Starting with verse 16. Dealing with God and Caesar. Because Caesar was over the Roman Empire. And even the Romans got a Bible called the Bible of Reims. That Bible was put together by the Pope of Rome. So render unto Caesar what is Caesar. You ain't in Caesar's religion. And they sent out unto him. Talking about Jesus. Their disciples with the Heridian saying, Master, see they're trying to trip it. Master, we know that thou art true and teaches the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. You know, butter him up before they're trying to stick the knife in it. You know how people do you sometimes? They butter you up just to get your ego going and then they stick you in the back. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? The every black person don't even know what that even means. What thinkest thou? <laughs> it is lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Then the book says, but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute of money, meaning show me what picture is on the money. Listen to what Jesus said about pictures on money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, who is this image and superscription on it? Yes, sir. They say unto him, oh, that is Caesar. Then said he unto them, then render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God. When they heard, when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Then they came back to question him about the resurrection. Hold, hold up, Jesus. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, there is no what? These are the Sadducees who know Moses' law. They know the Old Testament. It ain't nothing in the Old Testament about when you die, you're going to come back. Right. In fact, it says when you die, go into the ground. That body ain't coming back, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My dear, you ain't gonna never see that body. Her essence returned back to God. And she can be recycled just like you through your seed. 
through your genealogy. You can only come back if your children keep having children. And a hundred years from now, at a family reunion, somebody gonna say, boy, that boy remind me of Unc Uncle Ramos, nephews, uncle, sister, brother, son-in-law. Don't that boy act like Uncle Ramos? There you go again. You come back through your seed. Y'all all right? Which say that there is no resurrection and asked him, Reverend Price, saying, Master, now, now, now Moses said. Now they throwing Moses at him. Because every prophet who God sends, he cannot condemn the prophet before him. We are taught in the Holy Quran. And from Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings be upon him. And our leader teaches us, make no distinction between the prophets. One come to fulfill what the other one said. Saying, Master, now, now, now. Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, there were with us seven brethren. And the first, when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, Jesus, the second also and the third unto the seven. And last of all, the women died also. Now, listen to this. Y'all all right? Yes, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife Whose wife shall be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, check out Jesus' word, Reverend Price. You say you've been studying the uh, New Testament for 45 years. How did you miss what I'm getting ready to read now? Listen at Jesus' words, not Paul. Because he don't call himself no fool. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angel of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, oh man, look here. Look, he didn't say what is. He said, look, Moses already told you what was. Why y'all trying to trick us? Trick me. Listen to what he said. Moses said, he said, this is what was, and it still is today. Jesus talking about God. He says, it reads, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living only. What's wrong? Come on, Christians. What's wrong? Jesus, remember now Moses said the dead ain't coming back. Jesus said he knew it. He said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. But he's not the God of the what? Living. But the God of the what? Living. But how can you be living and dead at the same time? If you're walking and don't have a thorough knowledge of yourself, you're mentally dead. If you're walking and don't know the true and living God, you're spiritually dead. And if you're spiritually dead, you're mentally dead. And if you're mentally dead, one day you're going to get caught up in a drive-by because it's inevitable that you will die. This is your Bible, Reverend Price. Don't even come with that weak, willy bobo stuff. Now, is Paul telling the truth or is Jesus telling the truth? That's the question. 
Should we believe what Paul say or should we believe what Jesus say? Y'all talk to me. We have showed you time and time again, Reverend Price have not gone deep enough in his study. You can't come at the Honorable Lewis for a con like that. That's why he want to talk to you, Reverend Price. Not to convert you. If you're going to be a Christian, be a Christian in truth. You can stay with Jesus, but don't lie on Jesus. Don't lie on Moses. Don't lie on Louis Farrakhan. Because we would defend our teachings and we would defend Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and Master Farad Muhammad. We would defend them all. Now, how is Paul going to teach on the resurrection of Jesus when Jesus himself said in the book of John, he go never to come back? Go to the book of John, chapter 14. What chapter? 14. Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. That's Jesus talking. If you go to verse 19, John 14 and 19, Jesus says, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. And the world seeth me what? No but ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. And he's going away and the world is not going to see him. But he said he would send another comforter. And he, the spirit of truth, will lead you into all truth. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for listening. And may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.